Hello, I'm Jerry Roman and welcome back to my channel. My trip to India to ride the Himalayas on a motorcycle was absolutely amazing. And here's a little clip to show you part of that experience. While I was off on my motorcycle adventure, the stock market took a beating. And right now the headlines are full of doom and gloom focused on inflation, stagflation, and a recession. Funny thing is smart investors are looking for buying opportunities. Are you? Case in point, last week, Warren Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway spent over $500 million acquiring another 9.6 million shares of Occidental Petroleum, and there is talk that Warren may try to buy the entire company. And last week, Warren Buffett also bought $2.5 billion worth of Citigroup, and this is really an interesting buy because Citigroup's performance has sucked compared to its peers in the banking industry. But Citigroup is a classic Warren Buffett-type move because it is trading well below their book value, and their P.E. ratio is about one half of the industry average. In other words, this is potentially an exceptional deep discounted value buy for Warren. The point I'm trying to make is when value investors like Warren Buffett start spending billions of dollars to buy undervalued companies, we should all pay attention. For years, Warren Buffett has been sitting on billions of dollars in cash and not buying because he did not see anything of value. But with the bear market dropping stock prices, he's now starting to buy. Is it time for you to invest? If you were buying value stocks at a discount, do not expect the stock price to shoot up overnight. In fact, it's more likely that the stock will go down some before it takes off. So be prepared to hold for the long term and don't expect instant gains or success. Let's start off the day by going over a winning trade. Now in my Discord, and on the left, you can see the channels, and we cover everything from uranium, metals, EVs, you name it. But I want to show you two recent testimonials. First, we have from W Money. All my friends have red investments, but not in this Discord. Thanks, Jerry, and the wonderful moderators. I'm a new investor and still learning, up 18.21%. Very well done. And then we've got one from Beach Bums. On days like today, when every index dropped 3% and their chart is straight down for months, I zoom out and look at my chart. Such a good feeling, not to brag or pat myself on the back. It's simply my gratitude to Jerry and this group. Had I not stumbled upon his videos and joined his Discord, my portfolio would be on the same boat with these indexes or worse. My journey started recently in 2020, just like more than half of the retail investors out there. I didn't know what I was doing and didn't take it seriously until February of this year. Yes, you read it right, 02 2022, when I placed my first option play and really paid attention to the market. Before that, I was just swing trading or bought and hold the big names. Well, you all know the story of those big names in the last couple of earnings. Stay calm and play the trend. If I wasn't part of this group, I probably wouldn't know about the killer plays in energy or uranium and completely miss the boat on that. Knowledge is power and your investment will turn out just fine. And here you can see he's had a 25.28% return in the last month. And if we compare that to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, they were down 4.62%, the S&P down 6%, and the NASDAQ was down 7.58%. And so those are just a couple recent testimonials that I wanted to share with you guys. My Discord is all about helping people make money. And if you want all of our live trading alerts on stocks, options, and crypto, then come join our community. It's a tremendous value and you see the results we're getting every day. All right, now's the time to grab a huge cup of coffee and hang on because this is not your normal stock channel. So what is an undervalued stock? I define an undervalued stock as a company that is consistently profitable and has attractive long-term growth potential. Stocks like these can be great options for patient buy and hold investors willing to hold for the long term. So today we're going to take a look at some of the best undervalued stocks on the market and separate the BS from the facts by looking at the stock's fundamentals. I want to stress that right now we are in the middle of a bear market and just because we had a big up day on Friday, that doesn't mean this is the time to go all in and buy like crazy. The VIX volatility index is currently at 27, and this tells us we need to be very cautious, especially with everything going on in the U.S. and world economies. And this begs the question, should I buy stocks now with so much uncertainty? My answer is yes, as long as you're planning to invest for the long term. The best way to build wealth is to stay invested. And if you're investing with money that you don't need for the next five or more years, then short-term drops aren't much of a concern if you focus on the big picture. I work really hard to provide no fluff videos packed with real data to help you invest better. And all I ask is that you personally hit that like button to help get this video over 700 likes. Please take one second to give this video a thumbs up. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Real quick, I'd like to tell you how I found today's undervalued stocks. Here are some of the criteria that I used. Number one, I wanted a revenue growth forecast greater than 50%. Number two, I wanted levered free cash flow that's greater than 10%. And this makes sure the company has enough money coming in so it can pay all their bills 
skills and expand their business. Number three, I wanted multiple analyst buy recommendations. Number four, and this is really important, I wanted a net income margin greater than 15%. And number five, I want an analyst upside greater than 30%. In a nutshell, I'm looking for fundamentally strong, undervalued companies that are growing their revenues. I want to stress that the criteria found these stocks and it was nothing to do with my personal bias. Let's go over to beastmodeanalysis.com to check out the fundamentals. We're now at beastmodeanalysis.com and let's jump over to our side by side and look at the stocks we're covering today. We've got ConocoPhillips, ticker COP. We've got Cotera Energy, CTRA. We have PDC Energy, which is ticker PDCE. Matador Resources Company, ticker MTDR. Magnolia Oil and Gas, ticker MGY. And then we've got Advanced Micro Devices, ticker AMD. And the first thing we notice is that five out of the six are in the oil industry. And I really want to stress that I did not go looking for oil and gas stocks. I put out the criteria and this is what came back. And then I'm also a little bit surprised we also picked up AMD. So we'll go through this on a fundamental analysis and we'll see what each of these companies are bringing to the table. The beast mode is broken down into different sections to make things really easy to understand. And anytime we've got something highlighted in blue, that's the most important part of that section. And light green is the second most important. So let's start by looking at the PE ratio. We can see ConocoPhillips is 9.1, Cotera Energy 12.9, PDC 11.9, Matador 7.6, and Magnolia Oil 10.8. So all of these oil and gas companies have very low PE ratios and that's very desirable. And then we can see advanced micro devices, A and is coming in at 41.6. The income statement, it tells us whether or not the companies are making money. And if we look at the operating margin, we like that to come in above 10% for long-term buy and holds. We can see our winner on the day here is going to be Magnolia Oil and Gas coming in at an impressive 55.88%. And then we've got the net income margin. You'll also notice we've got a little up arrow here. And that's a cheat sheet. It's always telling us whether we're looking for a high or for a low value. So for net income margin, our winner again is going to be Magnolia Oil at 38.69%. But we can see we've got a lot of others really close. We've got Cotera Energy at 33.57%, Matador Resources at 35.17%, and then AMD is also strong at 19.24%. And I can't stress enough how important the net income margin is, especially in a bear market, because these companies are making money. And if you're making money, it's a lot easier to weather a storm or a recession. And that's one of the reasons why I like these companies. Our next section is capital ratios. And I like to look at the debt to equity ratio. And if you need to know what anything is, just hover over the little I and a pop-up shows up. And this tells us that the debt to equity ratio compares a company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity and can be used to evaluate how much leverage a company is using. Higher leverage ratios tend to indicate a company or stock with higher risk to shareholders. The result is the dollars of debt for every dollar of equity. Compare the ratio to other similar companies. So here we can see we're looking for a low value and our lowest on the day is actually AMD at 0.09. For our gas and oil stocks, our lowest on the day here is going to be Cotera Energy at 0.29. The balance sheet tells us whether or not the companies are financially stable. And I like to look at what I call the tattle ratio. And that's because it tattles on the company's overall strength and financial stability. And here we simply compare the total assets to the total liabilities. And I love when that number comes in at two or higher. So if we look at ConocoPhillips, we can see their total assets are $90.6 billion. Their total liabilities are $45.2 billion, giving them a tattle ratio of two. And if we look across the board, all of these guys are a two or higher. And our winner on the day is a actually AMD at 2.52. Up next, we've got our key performance metrics and all are very insightful to the company's overall condition. And here we like to have a lot of black and blue. We don't want to see any red and luckily none of these companies have red. So if we look at the revenue growth last year, we can see our winner here is going to be ConocoPhillips at 143.97%, an absolute insane number. If we look at the free cash flow margin, our winner is actually Magnolia Oil at 52.45%, but all of these guys have great free cash flow margins. If we look at the rule of 40 indicator, and you need to know what that is, pop over the eye and it tells us it's a ratio that measures a company's combined growth rate and profit margin. Many venture capital and growth equity investors believe this ratio should exceed 40%, especially for software companies. The rule of 40 was coined by software angel investor Brad Feld in a blog post in 2015. The best way to sum up the rule of 40 is from Feld himself. So if you are growing at 20% in sales, you should be generating a profit of 20%. If you're growing at 40%, you should be generating a 0% profit. If you're 
growing at 50%, you can lose 10%. If you were doing better than the 40% rule, that's awesome. So here for the rule of 40% indicator, all of these guys are exceptionally high. Our winner on the day is ConocoPhillips. We've got the FNR indicator. What's that? Well, this is simply totaling up the free cash flow, the net income margin, and the revenue growth over the last 12 months. The higher that number, the better. Our winner here is going to be Coterra Energy at 196. And then for the book value ratio, anything above one means the stock is trading below the book value. So our stock that is the closest to the book value is Coterra Energy at 0.88. And we can see the stock farthest away from the book value ratio is actually Advanced Micro Devices at 0.07. And the management effectiveness, this tells us how well management is generating returns for investors. The two that I like to look at are the return on equity. And most of you guys are familiar with this. The higher that number, the better. Here we can see AMD is coming in at 47.4%. And then I've got my own custom indicator called the 5R indicator. And we're simply summing up all of the different returns. The higher that number, the better. And again, our winner here is going to be AMD. And we love to see black and blue. And AMD is the runaway winner right here. Lots of blue. Our last section is the growth metrics, and I really believe companies should be consistently growing their business. So if we look at the EBITDA growth, and if you're not familiar with that, simply hover over it, and it tells us that this is the net income or earnings with interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization added back. EBITDA growth gives investors a snapshot of short-term operational efficiency because EBITDA ignores the impacts of non-operating factors such as interest expenses, taxes, or intangible assets. The result is a metric that is a more accurate reflection of a firm's operating profitability. So our highest on the day here is Magnolia Oil at 424.3. And the last metric we're going to talk about today is the net income growth percentage. Again, we're in the middle of an energy crisis, so it's no wonder these numbers are so sky high and do not expect these to hold true for the next couple of years. But as long as we have an energy crisis, these numbers should be higher than usual. So that's a good reason to be in these companies. And we've got Coterra Energy coming in at 476.1%. That is an absolutely crazy high number. But if we look across the industry, it's not that unusual. Everybody in the oil and gas is up more than 134%. And for the semiconductor stock, AMD, they're actually up 27%, which isn't too bad and a little bit more of a realistic growth number. And to close, let's take a quick look at the analyst ratings on tipranks.com. This is one of my favorite websites for stock information. We're now in tip ranks looking at ConocoPhillips, ticker COP. We can see their last trading price was $90.91. The analyst rating consensus is currently a strong buy with 13 ratings, 12 being a buy, one being a hold, and that's from the top analyst. And we currently have a price target of $130.69, giving it a 43.76% upside. So that is a lot of upside on this stock. We're still in an energy crisis and this is one of the reasons why I love energy stocks right now. A few other things we can do on tip ranks. We can look at insider trading, news and insights, crowd wisdom, and I want to drop down to the earnings and let's see how they've been performing and we can see their chart is going up steadily. Their next reporting earnings on August 4th and the estimated earnings per share is 383 which is up from their last reported earnings of 327. For Coterra Energy, ticker CTRA, we can see their last trading price is $26.35. We can see they're currently rated a moderate buy. They have 11 ratings, and they're not as bullish overall on this one. We have four buy ratings, seven hold ratings, and the analyst price target is $36.82, giving it an impressive 39.73% upside. We can scroll down and we can see a detailed list of the analyst forecast, and I want to show you one of them in particular. If we come down and we look at William Janella, we can see they've got a success rate of 70% and their average return is 50.5%. We can also see they currently have a hold rating and they've got a price target of $35 on Coterra. Next up, we've got PDC Energy, ticker PDCE. Last trading price was $59.86. We've got six strong buy ratings. All of them are buys. And then we've got an analyst price target of $104.50. And if we scroll down, let me show you one analyst. Let's look at Nitin Kumar, and he is from Wells Fargo. Check out his track record. He's got a success rate of 78%, and he has won on 87 out of 111 picks. His average return is 33.30%. 
2.4%, which is impressive. And he currently has a price target of $102 on PDCE. And again, it's trading at $59.86. For Matador Resources, last trading price was $47.01. We've got a strong buy, five ratings, all are buy ratings. And the analyst price target is $78, which is a 65.92% upside. And if we scroll down, you'll start to get familiar with different analysts. We can see Nitin is also covering this one. Same success rate, 78%, average return, 33.3%. And he probably specializes in oil, gas, and energy stocks. And here we can see he's got it with 48.9% upside. Magnolia Oil and Gas is ticker MGY, last traded at $21.21. It has five strong buy ratings. The analyst price target is $31.80, giving it 49.93% of upside. And again, if we scroll down, we can see we've got the same Nitin Kumar from Wells Fargo, and his price target on this one is $29, giving it 36.73% upside. And the last stock we're looking at on tip ranks today is AMD, Advanced Micro Devices in the Semiconductor Space. The last trade price was $87.08. Here we can see they're rated as a moderate buy with 24 different ratings, 15 are buys, 9 are holds, and the analyst price target is $136.71, giving it a 56.99% upside. And if we scroll down, I want to show you one analyst in particular. Let's see if we can find him. It is Rick Schaefer. He's got a 74% success rate, which is quite impressive, and his average return is 25.5%. And if we click on his name, we can jump over and look at everything he's covering. And here we can see AVGO, Intel, NVIDIA, which is one of my favorites. You can see all of the different ratings. And this is a great way to back into some different stocks by finding analysts that you like. And I mean, this success rate and an average return, extremely impressive. And if you'd like to get your own copy of Tip Ranks, I've got a special link for you down below. They've got a lot of really cool things. Uh, one of the ones I like is the top insider stock. So check them out if you get a chance. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you want to learn how to read charts, trade options, receive our hot stock watch list, use my custom indicators, or get all of our trading alerts, the links are in the description down below. We're still in a very volatile market, so be careful and trade smart. And don't get caught up in believing the headlines and the BS the news media is feeding you. Think for yourself and draw your own conclusions. There are sound reasons why investors like Warren Buffett are spending billions right now, and we want to keep our eyes open for long-term opportunities. Hopefully, my video today has shown you a few stocks to consider. Peace and I'll see you on the next video.